Today I'm going to show you some experiments designing embossed open cables on the fly. No planning whatsoever. I'm going to be assuming that you've either watched the video series or have the book Pretzel Logic Cables so that I can highlight the design process on the machine rather than emphasize the basics of how we work these. All of that has been fully discussed in other videos as well as in the book. So let's jump in and knit. We will need weights because we're using both beds. I'm using a do-it-yourself weighted comb. If you want to make one of these, the instructions are in my Cool Tools and Cheap Tricks book. And it easily covers a span, at least mine does, of 32 needles, so that's what I'll use for convenience. I've already cast on using the main bed and knitted a few rows. And now I'm going to transfer all except the very end stitches to the front or river bed. On this particular machine, this is my Brother 260, I really don't have to leave the end stitches on the main bed, but sometimes rivers behave better if the main bed holds the end stitch, and since I'm only knitting a sample, that's just fine. So if your river is one that balks at knitting off the end stitch and tends to drop it, this is a technique that you can normally use. And here I'm continuing to transfer stitches but simply demonstrating that there's more than one way to do it. Here I'm using the passive orange tool, which has a bent tine on the end to move the stitches. Whichever works better and is more comfortable for you is totally fine. I'm going to knit a few background rows on the river before beginning to work on the main bed, and we'll make an embossed cable and experiment. I have an idea I want to try. To get cable stitches to work where there were none, Lift the purl bumps from the front bed knitting onto whatever needles you want to use. At this point, the needles will hit each other. Now rack so that these needles will pass each other because they're all going to be in use at the same time. The first row or two will be quite stiff while we establish the knitting. So I knitted four rows. Now I'm going to cross the four stitches the two right ones in front, the two left ones behind, making a cable. The row right after a cable is the toughest one for the machine to knit. So I frequently bring the needles all the way forward and let the carriage knit back from hold, which eases it a little. Let's start moving the cable ropes. I'm moving the left rope one needle space to the left, the right one one needle space to the right, and knit two rows. Let's do the same thing again. Now I think I'll change up a little bit. I'm going to move this pair of stitches two whole needle spaces over rather than one and do the same with the group on the right. That will make my cable rope slant out more sharply. I have a hope in mind of how I think this might turn out and we'll see if this helps me achieve that goal and knit two rows. Let's go back to moving out one needle space for this move. I'm going to move out one needle space again, but then we're going to change up and add some more stitches to the mix. I'm going to lift the two purl bars from the center stitches and hang them on needles for the main or back bed. If you're knitting on a passive, this works just the same, but you'll be calling it the back bed. So creating new cable stitches. Always remember to make sure every needle that's not supposed to be in work is all the way back at the rail. And when creating new stitches, I also want to make sure that I have them evenly spaced for what I have in mind. Asymmetry is an okay thing to do, but you need to do it on purpose. Now let's cable these two stitches right over left and next to them place a new stitch into work on each side. So now I've got the makings of a pair of cable ropes in the center and they can start moving apart and the end ones can start moving towards the brand new ropes. This move makes them equidistant. There are two empty needles between each of the four cable ropes but that means that on this move 
two ropes on the left a join and two ropes on the right a join. Let's knit another two rows and call it quits. If I transfer all of the cable stitches to the front or river bed, the cable will disappear. It will be over with and we'll see what we get. We'll knit another few rows to keep the background going and take it off the machine and have a peek. Wow, it worked really well. I envisioned it making a heart and it did make a heart. I promise you that it doesn't usually work for me first time like this, but it honestly did this time. How fun. I like that one well enough that I will turn what I did into a chart and it is being developed right now into this pattern. This is one of the pillow patterns from the Pretzel Logic book. You could easily substitute the heart motif for the twisted rope motif and have fun with that or the same kind of panel could make a purse or part of a baby blanket. Now let's try something else. For this one I think I'll start with six stitches in the center. I normally make my cable ropes two stitches each at least for bulky projects of this scale. It, the doll clothes, obviously, that doesn't work out so well. But this makes three cable ropes, and I'm gonna start moving them apart, just for a little bit, and then start moving them back towards one another. But all this time, the center rope has stayed still. And when they get back to where they're touching again, I think I'll cable them, but only two ropes at a time the right and the center rope, and the left and the center rope, going from outside to inside first. Here's what that produced, and I almost like it. I think the beginning looks very good, but I think I needed another method of twisting the three ropes. Not crazy about that. I think I would have done better to emulate the bottom on the top, and perhaps not even really make a true cable cross, just let the stitches move apart together, meet in the middle, and go back to the front bit. So that's something to keep in mind and try again. Let's try three cable ropes again, but this time leaving the one on the left in position while the two on the right move towards one another. When the two ropes get to be side by side, I think I'll cable them, and I'm going to work cabling outside rope over inside rope. It's easier to think of it that way than it is to think of right over left, because if you're trying to make a mirror image cable, outside over inside is right every time, whereas right over left will get you confused. Now that the ropes are back in their original positions, I will move the left hand pair towards one another progressively for several moves, and then I can cable them together. Again, outside over inside. I find it helps to have a guiding principle rather than to do the work by rote. And let's move the cable ropes back to their original positions and see what we have. That's not bad at all. I could definitely see this going up a scarf or an adult sweater, particularly a man's. I say that because the proportion is too large for a child or a baby sweater. And for some women, it might be a little much, at least the bulky version of it. But men's larger flat chests might be just the place for this cable to look great. This one would be super easy to memorize. So even though I hope you get the Pretzel Logic book and enjoy making the projects with patterns, I hope you have just as much fun playing around with what else you can do, creating your own cables, right out of your imagination.